strangled to red by a shadow male Renamon. There are tons of stories is out there about attacked Pokemon games. Some stories are really quite neat, such as the one and about a version where you get a ghost as a starter. Some are quite ridiculous as well. Silly stories about oh, people dying out there or playing a game in order to gain talking to them. God, don't these writers know less is more or when it comes to this stuff? Ah, uh, well, I digress. For instance, in these hacked game, is there currently in any store store on eBay or handed out by the homeless people or to rent a pastor or spy? I didn't have the pleasure of meeting these, these creepy people. I merely found this particular cartridge in a trash bin and, and went the garbage truck back to my neighbor's dumper, dumpster. I noticed the game, and, and asked the trash man if I could take it, and he didn't seem to mind. It was thrown away after all. I, of course, checked with my neighbor, or to confirm they actually didn't need it, though they seemed perplexed, as if they never seen in their life. Their son and made a grab for it, a little boy who saw the Charizard on the cover. Or crying out, Pokemon, I want money. But his mother told no. Think that as I found it, he didn't have Game Boy anyway. He just liked Pokemon. Thinking nothing. I simply walked, went home, looking, for, looking at the cartridge's sticker on, on the way. Just a plain old red version. He sticks torn slightly across his Charizard's neck. But that was expected with such an old game. I had blue for him in, in, uh, as a kid. So he was it's a big eager to see the albeit minimal old differences red version had. I was rather disappointed by what I saw when the tile screen showed up. Pokemon strangled red version. Well, damn it. It was a hack. Hacks were neat and all, but they had zero monetary value. The originals were quite valuable right now. I want to play Red A, not this crap. Oh well, it was free. Might as well try it. The name was odd, however. Strangled Red? That made no sense. Not even the morbid description of someone being asphyxiated, as people turn blue when choking, not red. Who knows, maybe there was a pair of these hacks in I bet. The more I thought of this, though, the more interested I became. My initial turn disappointment turned into curiosity. I wanted to know of what the creator had made, and I it was going to note everything I saw. The first I oddity I noticed was was the start screen had a Charizard next to the trainer instead of the Charmander. Also, the Pokemon never cycled through the like the original version, and did instead. It just stayed Charizard even after five minutes of waiting. Shrugging, I hit its start, noticing that there was no Charizard cry as there was supposed to be. I thought there was a continue option, so I figured I'd do what everyone did that was use games and see what the previous owner had to fun. No. I blinked in surprise. No. What do you mean, no? The game wouldn't let me continue, no matter what. So, on the fourth attempt, I heard the Charizard cry. Quiet and barely audible, but there. I shook it off. 
I decided to hit the game, like I would I'd have done after checking the old, old file all anyway. The screen cut to black for a while. No Professor, Professor Oak, no starring theme, nothing at all. Eventually, the, the screen came back, showing a bedroom. Two beds, two TVs, and a computer in the corner. My trainer spike with the usual one consisted with the original red version. I was curious as on why he didn't ask my name, so that was answered as I opened the pause menu. Noticing my trainer was named Steven. No, this was this isn't my real name or some stupid shit like that. The game wasn't self aware or haunted, at least not that I know of. And it it just had a chosen a in a name. It's just had a name chosen already. Curious, I saw he had the star amount of money, no badges. He didn't look like red though. His hair was longer, all was, was reaching down halfway down his back. Red's usual sprite smile replaced with a confident smirk. Honestly, I found this sprite much cooler than Red. Next, I checked out his Pokemon. A single Charmander, level 5, named Miki. Nothing was odd about, or should I say her, with the name and all. She had the game Charmander stats, only need Scratch and tail whip. Basic stuff. The game seems relatively normal. Returning to the game. Returning to the game. I walked up to, up about the room, noticing if Steven's long hair was present on the back of my trailer sprite. It when I when my back was turned to the camera. I didn't recognize the house. But I descended the stairs. Just to see more. Downstairs was another trainer, who spoke to me the instant I came down. Ready yet? Yeah. I assumed this mic was my rifle, pre-decided for me. I replaced with blue, who most likely. So, I thought back to the bedroom having two beds, realizing they weren't just rifles. They were either brothers or roommates. They talked back and forth, basic Pokemon dialogue, becoming a Pokemaster, catching all, such stuff. stuff like that. Before having a little argument over which is better, Charmander or Squirtle. Which, of course, led to the introduction battle. Like the one versus Blue in the lab. Simple enough. Scratch tackle, scratch tackle, till I won, purely for having the first turn. I took note how much better Streven's sprite looked in combat than Red's. I had a pose, his hair looking like it was blowing in the wind. A brief minor upgrade, but still much nicer. I left the house and after some more banter with my brother. Stepping out of the Power Town theme. Going to the east, I found this was indeed Power Town. The house was simply in the outskirts it's to the west. I know there was no mysterious grassy field like in normal Power Town. Wandering about, I decided to check in on Red's home. His mother was inside, and when I talked to her, she commented on how he, handsome Stephen was. Looked, hoping her son and would look up to him as a role model for her when he became tra a trainer himself next year. Which of course led me to realize this game took a year, place a year, before the original Pokemon. Red was even upstairs playing the SNES in his room, commenting, I'm gonna be the best too. But it's my turn. I was starting to like this hack. It was interesting. 
a completely new adventure, a different character. Hell, Stephen has even and seemed to have a history with the people in this t in his town, a reputation, a person personality beyond a silent protagonist. The people in the town talk to him as a person, making conversation, not just bound tutorial, the little tutorial crap. Even Blue's sister had new dialogue. They seemed to be in a relationship, too. As the dialogue ended with a kiss and a heart over, over her head. Professor Oak was simply wished me well, give me a Pokédex state in my adventure. He wasn't giving me... Duh, giving it to me... It, it to be the reason behind into adventure like every other Pokemon game out there. He gave it to me out of kindness. Something to help me on you know, my way. A gift. I was liking this more and more or with each second. The game seemed like it seemed to have an actual story now. I was something, not just a cookie cutter protagonist anyone could be. Not just some blank sh not some blank sheet. That could be replaced without outer noise. The story was different, though the actual gameplay was remained this, the same. I went north like I was supposed to. Went from town to town, collected badges, received coins from the leaders. Stephen's fate is even seen to spread, as some NPCs would talk like they knew him. I used Miki for every battle, and she it was growing surprisingly fast. She had a rock with these, even pounded Missy with no trouble at all. She wasn't that earthly affected by super effective attacks like as others. Did more damage than regular, than a regular Charmander. She was a veritable powerhouse. She even became a Charizard at the mere or level of 25. Not bad at all, I must say. Things started to get weird as soon as I reached Lavender Town. I know, I know. Lavender Town is the focus of behind every creepy story and the like. But it was the only place that it was noticeably different. There was no Team Rocket invasion. Which I found odd. So I did remember this was a year in the past. So the invasion wouldn't occur, un wouldn't occur until Red's time. I entered the Pokemon Tower aiming to get a ghastly. But that's when thing that's when it got on. I shouldn't be and I have no reason to be here. Stephen wouldn't go into Pokemon and Tower no matter what I did. This was weird. I mean, hell. There was a million places in Kanto. Kanto. Oh, you really had no need to be. Little random houses with nothing but children and TCs, for example. Why was it here that Stephen wouldn't enter? Was it wrong? I figured I wouldn't need a ghastly. Think Miki. Think as Miki could handle anything. So I simply went on my way. Last in our town, I'm serving no purpose other than a passageway to a Pokemon's Poke Center. The game in progressed normally from there. The remaining gems fell, and eventually I made my way to the Elite Four and defeated them. As with Brulu, my brother, Mike, was there before me, initiating a championship battle, which Mickey swept with ease. The aftermath as of the battle was quite pleasant. Not the attention that was present between, in, between in Red and Blue at the end of their match. The brothers congratulated each other on their progress and shook hands. Before the screen went to white, no Hall of Fame, nor any credits. 
When the thing came back, it was at the house again. The two brothers sitting at the computer, conversing with each other. I don't want to. Come on. I just gotta borrow her for a second to finish the Pokédex. The entry run and register or unless she recognizes me as a master for just a second. But she's my Mickey. I promise to give her back. Come on, please. Yes, no. I was a bit perplexed, so I hit no, just to be cautious. Come on, please. No. Come on, please. I really, if this would simply continue to loop until I hit yes. So I did, just as to see what happens. Alright, this would just take a sec. Then we'll be, oh, the Pokemasters. Stephen said nothing. The screen changed to an animation, and when the two when the two tra people trade Pokemon, which I found a bit weird. I think I fight was slow, but whatever. This was as what was apparently supposed to happen. Mickey went first. I watched lazily as she began to train, travel down the train tube. Snap! That made me jump. The sudden noise resonating in my silent bedroom. Loud because of, of, of the volume being way up, up. Looking at the screen, I noticed that the game's hat at frozen. Mickey still will admit trade. But the game wasn't doing anything. As a sigh, I turned to the game off, wondering in when my last save was. When the game turned back on, I stared for a moment at the start screen. There was no Charter next to the trainer. Upon pressing start, I saw the new game option was absent, only leaving continue. This was... strange, to say the least. So, I selected it. The game starting without even showing my save... my stats as usual. My jaw dropped... Wet at what I was greeted with. One... year... later. The Labrador Town... On scene came first, playing its normal way. The screen slowly fading from black. Stephen was in the Pokemon Tower, which made the music even stranger, seeing as if the tower had its own theme. He was standing in front of the tombstone, not doing anything, wondering what was going on. I pressed A. Hmm. Confused, I tried walking, realizing I was indeed in the control, in control for, at the moment. I brought up the epos menu and checked my epari. Mickey was gone. Not just her, all Pokemon. He had nothing. The dex was absent from the menu, his bag empty. Honestly concerned, I checked his car, trainer card. He had no money, no batches. His flight time was 8,795, which was impossible as I only he, he had locked the third hours in before. But this wasn't the strangest part. His picture. The picture of the handsome, constant young trainer was different. His eyes were blank, his face turned slightly down, and that smirk was gone. 
replaced by Elakis and Ocean. The long hair is his, far in the perfect perm, it's now missing and don't care. I can't look at him anymore. Causing the man here, I went out, I went to move out of the tower. But with every step I took away from the tombstone, the screen flickered. Like it did when a Pokemon was poisoned. Gulping, I brought the e trainer card again. This picture getting worse. Every step I took, he hung his head more er, and more. Shoulders slumped. He bent over. By the time I exited the tower, he was on his knees. Hands to his face, hair draped across him. I had already guessed what was going on, but this clenched it. I began to put some things together in my mind. I have only, I have always, is wondered why there was no champion in the original games besides your rival. Why is it you, the protagonist, have to beat your rival? And he just waltzed in. No previous cha champion to challenge. Then it struck me. The answer was right there. The cha previous champion gave up. This pre precious Miki was apparently dead. And with her, so died part of him. His Pokédex, the other Pokémon, his batches, his fame. All of it, he threw it away. In that year, the year that he missed, the year where all those others came from, I even did the math. There are 8,765 hours in a year. Add that to my theory from before, and it matched up. Even so, the game kept going. I think it should have been an ending, I thought. I mean, what else is there to do? I had no Pokedex, no Pokemon, not a anything. What was I supposed to be doing? I talked to everyone in the town, but they all said the same, said similar things. Are you okay? Still worrying, I see. Everything will be all right. Please, is there anything we can do? Stephen never replied to them. They all, and they all said, simply said the same things over and over. I couldn't put the game down now. This was all so strange. <laughs> Curious, I head off to tall grass. <laughs> And eventually going to a Pokemon, I mean, with, in a battle, or with a Rattata. No Pokemon was sent out, just Steven Sprite. I was wondering how I'd battle. Well, Rattata, Lefty B. The battle ended without anything happening. This was certainly... Interesting, it had happened with every Pokemon I encountered. The wild Pidgey ignored you, while Ponyma wandered off. Then, the music never changed either. No matter where I went, Lavender Town came from the speakers, following me. Slightly, sometimes slowed down, and slightly, sometimes not. I searched everywhere, every town, talked to everybody, wondering just what the fuck I need to do. My frustration with the snake extinct in which the person per the pressing adversaries at all. Making the experience all altogether unnerving and uncomfortable. But I couldn't tear myself away. I was starting to get a bit angry, though. Nobody telling me 
anything besides giving me the, their condolences and trying to get me items like lemonade or coffee, but it was met with, oh, I slapped myself for idiocy, suddenly realizing the, how the likely answer was in front of me. Palatal, of course. When I got up there, though, which took a long time, having to walk. No Pokemon to do fly with, no bike to ride. And Steven only seemed to move past regular speed. It wasn't much different. I tried into talking to Professor Oak. These things happen. You were just unlucky. Next, as I tried Blue Sister, please don't leave home again. Rex Pond wouldn't even talk to me at all. With nowhere to go oh, in mind, I walked to the west, finding the house from the beginning. Which I never have, which I had never entered since leaving Palatown. Inside was Mike, but talking to him was just as useless. I'm so sorry. I pondered for a moment if this was really the ending. Stephen doomed to new nothing but Rome Canto in misery. Haunted by the memories. Forced to listen to everyone's, to listen to everyone's concerns about him. As the last stitch ever to do anything, I went to the bedroom and walked over to the bed. I'm going to sleep. The screen flayed the black for a moment, then slowly faded back in. The world having a black tint to it. Mike's bright laying in the other bed. I assume this metric was night. I'm going to do it. Do what? Again, I had no idea. Try inspecting every everything in the room. Nothing happened. As soon as I left the house, another dialogue. It can bring her back. It can do anything. What the hell was it? Something that could do anything? I couldn't for the life of me figure it out. Wandering about. I tried to leave Pal down the usual way. Not that way. He wouldn't go any further. I tried the homes. Screw them. I cracked my eyebrow at that. For game farm when this was not a normal real Pokemon game. The vulgarity just took me off guard. I continued to look around, but there was nowhere to go. Until I accidentally stepped in the ocean and see if it walked right in. The only upper it's only the upper half of his sprite was visible. Like the swears you encounter in the Solarian gym. I didn't know he could swim. The missing one. Missing one. I paused for a moment. No. He couldn't possibly mean that I haven't had to I haven't I haven't tried the missing no trick again this hack yet but just fit too well that it had to be what he meant I surfed all the way to Cinnabar I began to feel something it was off more so than this than and this already was. Silence. The Lavender Town on theme had stopped. There was no noise at all, nor any, were there any Pokemon. I kept going. Find Cinnabar and surfing up and down the East Coast, and lo and behold, my missing note appeared. Fine. 
while sniffing the snow was caught. What the hell? But Steven didn't do anything. He just commanded that Trotsky's broken data to join him. No, become his possession. And it did. I was getting more and more disturbed by this all. Checking the start menu, I saw the missing note was not my party, but instead an item. Making things even weirder, I checked the trying card as well. Steven has his back to me, long hair draped behind him, hands in his pockets, nothing else. And I what he said at the start of this night, I really had I ha what I had to do. I searched the land and made my way northeast to where else? Lavender Town. Along the way, I noticed all tra the trainers. I believe still out at this hour. Wouldn't look at Stephen, often turning in when he passed. Even those of that were normally static. I tried talking to one of the officers in the guard house of building. Just go. They all said the same thing, so one sent down chills down my spine. Sometimes dead is best. My hands were swaying by this point. Stephen was about to try the impossible. Something somewhat sick he has a crime against nature, which many yes the people shared that opinion. I steeled myself. It's just a game, and was going to complete. It took an eternity to reach Pokemon Tower, but I got there eventually. Taking a deep breath and hanging towards the tombstone, I remembered which one. This image of Steven standing before it was burned through my, my mind. After all, first. I tried inspecting it. Sneaky. Nothing happened. With the gold, I opened the menu and selected Menino from the bag. Steven, don't use it. I was reminded when Professor Oak would magically tell you that you couldn't use a key item somewhere. Like when using the bike bicycle in a building. So, the message this time was different. Even worse, Stephen responded to it. In a world that cheated me, why should I play fair? Stephen used it. Stephen found, obtained a broken Nikki. What in God's name did I obtain? I couldn't tell you because the game took away my control. Without my input, Steven began to leave the tower on its own, walking single step by single step. Lavender Town seemed in start again. As he left the tower and began his excruciatingly slow journey against my will, Every time he crossed one of the borders, where the music would change, and it got progressively slow, more and more disturbing. By the time he reached Cerulean, it was nothing. It was a demonic rumbling. I just stared, watching him trying to guess where he was going. But it was getting more and more obvious. He was heading to the pallet town. The music had all but stopped when he got there. Playing single note by single note. He, exact he went exactly where I had guessed. Right to his own house. Inside and up the stairs. 
At this point, there was no music. Steven moves step by step, step up at his brother's bed, turning to face him. At first, I thought the game froze. He didn't do anything. Simply stood there, and I couldn't move him. I did, however, find out I could open the pause menu. I was terrified to look, but I couldn't stop up myself. I selected his trainer card. There was a low ground noise, like a distorted Pokemon cry. Steven was looking at me again, directly at the screen. He was hunched over, things obscuring his face. Hair was wild and feathered out between his bangs. There wasn't even a face at all, just black. Two red eyes looking straight forward, a white grin contrasting it with the darkness. That wasn't all. His name was now Stephen Wren in sleep speech. I couldn't look away. My eyes glued to his, not breaking contract for some contract. Cut for some time. My vision was getting blurry until I could see very well. My face grew wet. I was crying like a baby. There was nothing I could do to hold back the tears. I was the swiftest boy from the start. I built up the greatness, and then forced to watch this to decline after a tragic accident. And now, he was this. This thing. This abomination. I watched him go insane. Holding my tears, wiping my eyes, I closed out the trainer hard and tried to save the game, wanting to just quit. The game informed me this wasn't possible. Nothing can be saved now. The pause menu, it wouldn't close no matter what I did. So, with no other options, I checked the bag. Nothing happened. I checked Pokemon, and there was one. A single sprite met me. Had several hit points, its stats dead. Its name, Miki. I selected it, and I was greeted with four options. Status, it's her. Switch, never. Close, no. Strangle. My fingers were shaking. I selected Strangle. The menu closed, showing Steven in the room again. And again. Goodbye. Snap. The game shut itself off. I was more dumbfounded than frightened. In a bit of shock, I turned. Turned it back on. The title screen was showing the manic Steven and a horribly glitched Charizard. I pressed start to continue. All I saw was a zoomed out view of Pallet Town, showing Stevens' home to the west, the west, the girl, tall grass, surrounding get those unmovable stones, blocking it from the rest of the town. The image was completely static. No music, no movement, before fading to white and going back to the title. It was just as if I had been when I first popped it in. A trainer and a Charizard. I had attempted to hit contain. 